Hello guys, this is the second project that I built over the weekend. Um, this was actually an old Astron 20 amp power supply that uh, burned up, self-destructed, blew up, blah blah blah. No hope of ever repairing it, anything like that. So, I just stripped everything out of it, had an empty case, empty box, and uh, I, said, I, was, I was about to throw the box out and I said, no, you know something, I can use that for something. So I kept it for, I don't know, two or three weeks, staring at it and staring at it and staring at it. And I was saying to myself, like, what am I going to do with this box? And um, then it dawned on me. It would be a nice box to build a project into. And uh, the project I got here... It is an antenna tuner. I have a roller inductor and two uh, variable capacitors. The antenna tuner is called a T-network type tuner. And uh, I've tuned it up on 20 meters without any problem whatsoever. I actually have a set for, uh, for 20 meters right now on 14.220 megahertz. And uh, figured I'd uh, show you what it uh, what it looks like when I came up with um, the capacitors I have. They're you know they're not the biggest capacitors in the world, but they're doing the job. And uh, once I come across some uh, some better capacitors, obviously I'll replace the ones that's in her. But for now, I'll just keep what I got. But uh, let's take a look at the guts of the uh, simple. T network type uh, antenna tuner. So this is the uh, right hand side of the tuner box and first thing you'll see is this drum unit and what this is is an actual roller inductor. Um, now that's a uh, I don't know a ham fest I guess you want to call it. Uh, I'd say five years ago, six years ago it actually was over in Heart's Content, over in Trinity Bay, that I uh, picked this tuner up, and, uh, or the, I should say the roller inductor, and uh, I haven't really used it since I got it, and I said, but this is a good opportunity to put the roller inductor to use, which, as you can see, it's put to use. <laughs> so basically, uh, you got these four arms, there's two on this side, two on the other, these two here are grounded, the other two on this side is not grounded. It's ungrounded from the, from the chassis here. Uh, the RF uh, the RF flows through this through this side because that's because this side is what touches the, the wheel goes back and forth. So obviously this is hot RF hot. Um, so I got a heavy duty 12 gauge wire over here and uh, whatnot. But, uh, yeah. And of course, this is the rear end of the antenna tuner. Um, as you might know, <laughs> it was a power supply at one point. So, here, when you took the heat sink off the back of this, obviously there was a big gaping hole back here. So, I come up with a uh, piece of aluminum, aluminum sheeting here. And I'm using that to put the two connectors on, two antenna connectors. And, uh, couple self-tapping screws, two here, two down below, to secure it. And I've also got a ground stud here to put a, a ground wire on. But that's basically it for the arse end of the antenna tuner. Okay, so this is the left-hand side of the uh, tuning box. So you have a tuning capacitor here, and you have another tuning capacitor below it. Um, like I said, I'm using 12 gauge wire here, but I'm also using RG58 coax going between the two antenna connectors back here to the uh, to the, to, to the uh, variable capacitors here. Using RG58 coax. Coax is grounded to the chassis up here, it's grounded to the chassis back here. And uh, so that seems to Seems to work fine. So the uh, the roller inductor is insulated from the chassis of the box. I have some rubber spacers here. 
one deer, one below, and I have some ceramic um, insulating material and plastic insulating material. Basically, whatever I could find to insulate <laughs> that I could use for an insulator is what I have used for this. And uh, so that's the two two hot ones anyway. So those two here. So yeah, when you tune, I'm kind of gonna watch your fingers. <laughs> But, uh, other than that, yeah, of course we've got a non off switch here, but that does nothing yet. I may build a uh, receive amplifier inside of this thing, possibly. Haven't decided what I'm going to do. But I said I'm going to leave the switch in there. Could use it for something else down the road. And that is the, uh, one of the, uh, tuning capacitors again. Variable capacitors, two of them are exactly the same. Uh, 282, 2006. Uh, two of these actually came out of an old MFJ antenna tuner that uh, that met its fate. <laughs> it's one that was donated to me years ago. It was all burned up. The board was all burned up and everything. So obviously I saved it, the uh, the variable capacitors like you would and the connectors and whatnot, and uh, reused them in the, this. Uh, T network tuner. So, yeah. So, as you can see, RG58 coax has indeed been used on this. So, as I'm sure if I didn't use RG58, I'd be bald at. So, <laughs> there it is. And that round piece there. The round part is uh, looking at the roller inductor itself as it makes contact to the coil form is that wheel and it just rolls on top of the uh, the, uh, the wire on the drum so the roller inductor is actually a neat little neat little uh, thing to have so, uh, so you can see how the RF just bolted right to the to the bar, and the bar is all you know shorted. Obviously, three of these pieces are three of these are the same at the same potential, so they all had to be insulated from the front of the uh, the cabinet. Otherwise, they would be shorted out, and you wouldn't tune nothing, and you'd probably blow something up. Um. There is a marking on the back of the uh, roller inductor here, and it looks like it's someone marked it as uh, 24UH. So that's the size of the, uh, the roller inductor. But anyways, just wanted to show you that little uh, little project, and uh, that it's just something that you can make on your own, and uh, yeah. So, just project number two for this weekend. So I've been in the in the building mode. <laughs> so yeah, a little T T uh, T network tuner. So simple, easy to make. All you need is uh, obviously a coil, a couple of tuning capacitors, connectors, and a box to put it in, and a bit of coax. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, we shall chat later. Now, one thing you might have noticed was uh, this, what looks like a fuse. It's actually a bulb. Um, see them in the old, sometimes in the old radios behind the S meters. It was a bulb, but it's actually in the shape of a fuse. But anyways, all it is is just a piece of wire connected one end to the other and is wrapped around a red wire. And uh, basically, it's just an RF indicator. It just picks up RF and it actually and it just leads up. Um, so depending on how close I can move this left or right along that red wire, <laughs> and the close, and when I move it to the this side, to the left, the bulb won't light. But if I move it uh, to the center of the red wire, it will light up. So it's pretty. Uh, I guess it just gets resonant, I suppose. It's just an RF indicator. You never know. Could be in here working on it sometime. And, uh, and, 
Maybe their radio would get keyed up for some reason. And then uh, just to tell me that, okay, the radio's keyed up, get your fingers out of it. <laughs> well, it's, it's not any more than a simple RF indicator. So this is just an example now of the, uh, the bulb lighting up under induction. Just picking it up off the wire. There's the RF induction lighting up this bulb. PO1 MDS testing, one, two, three, three, two, one. So that's just picking up through induction. Via one MDS test, one, two, three, three, two, one. There you have it. <laughs> anyway, folks, hope you enjoyed the video. And we shall uh, see you on the next video. I have one more video coming up tonight. Thanks for watching.